best thing about right now is it's that I'm not at work. It's that I'm not doing board slides anymore. Oh man. So I work for a tech company, as a lot of you guys know, in sales and um we do we do our fair share of reporting to the board. You know, the ownership board. Listen to that 300 just plow up through some of this stuff. Anyway, so the best part about right now is that I'm not doing some PowerPoint board slides right now. I'm able to forget about that for a little bit and just get back out in nature and get back out on the bike and get centered again, get connected with my soul here. Not worried about sales quotas, not worried about managing guys. I wanna go out this way. the best thing is I'm not in those work meetings anymore. You know guys ask me all the time like to share riding tips and I kind of feel like I do a lot but maybe there's a lot of people that haven't been watching as much. Um, so let me share a couple with you right here while we're on the Shurkill 300 SCFR. Now, take these, take these things with a grain of salt because I'm not like a sponsored rider or anything, but I am an enthusiast. So, when in doubt, stand up. <laughs> stand up on the pegs. The other thing is, look at my hands right now. See what's happening with my hands? I'll shift back, slow down just a second. I've got, I've got my hands up on the bars. I've got, I've tried to get my elbows up into attack position, and I've got one hand on the front brake and one hand on the clutch. Now, why am I doing that? Why am I up on my hands for those very reasons right there when I blow in that corner? I'm blowing that corner, I'm up on my feet. It's easy for me to grab clutch, grab front brake. If I need to sit down, I can just sit back down on the seat, obviously. But if I'm up like that in attack position with, you know, one, I've got, I'm essentially covering all my controls. Covering the rear brake, I can cover it where my foot is over it. I'm covering the front brake with my right index finger. I'm gonna sit down right here. Put that foot out. And I'm covering the clutch in case I need to either clutch to, you know, get a stab of power, spin the wheel, you know, whatever it is. Drop down on the seat right there. Now, if this, if I'm pushing hard and the turns are tight, I'll sit down. Like on a lot of things, I'll just stay standing. Grab another gear here. So for instance, on this one, I'm not gonna sit. I'm gonna stay standing up because I got a big berm there anyway. I'll wait that outside peg and then make it through that turn. Staying up on the pegs, up on the pegs. Wait the outside peg here. Still standing. Now I'm gonna sit on this one. Because it was a little tighter. And I mean, you can stand. You, If you wanna stay standing for all of these, you can. For me, it's just a feel thing. Depending on what the train looks like, depending on how likely I think it is that I could wash my front wheel out because if you do wash your front wheel out from under you and you're standing up it's, you're probably gonna go down because you can't you can't stab a foot but a lot of times if you wait that outside peg and you're powering through 
the corner you may not you'll keep that front wheel light and it won't dig in you may blow the corner but i'm not sure that you're going to tuck the wheel as much if you're staying light on the front end anyway just some some things to think about definitely i'd say when the uh train gets gnarly which this isn't gnarly at all if the train gets gnarly i'd say yeah stand up for sure anytime i see major see i sat down right there and i had my hand on the clutch you know got brake front brake rear brake clutch and then i come out of that corner um and i then let off that clutch there we've had a lot of traffic on this thing this used to be a hidden gem out here nobody riding it now people are riding the crap out of it see braking bumps there acceleration bumps gonna be turning into wood soon everybody's out here cranking wasn't like this a year ago you know something that i really like about this this bike as it compares uh, to the two strokes that i ride a lot is because these motors rev so bloody high i can just stay in one gear longer and you, you shift you shift less which is no doubt one of the reasons why four strokes are used uh, so heavily in a lot of different styles of racing is because they rev so dang high i mean if you've got two or three or in some cases four or five thousand more rpms to rev through on a four stroke than you do in a two stroke because that is that is the case sometimes then that means you can just hold that gear come out of the corner or whatever stay in that gear and then just blast through you know to the next corner without shifting and if you know if milliseconds matter or you know fractions of a second matter for your sponsors or whatever then i can totally see why in a lot of you know, like super competitive races the uh the four strokes are so popular and and you definitely get a sense of that well you definitely get a sense of that on this bike you know that you can shift into second gear and just take her home and right there i'm in second gear and i'm you know letting that thing pull letting that torque pull me through Wah. section up here is starting to get a little bit more technical there's a little tech little spot right up here I'm gonna shift down make sure I'm in first gear oh this isn't the spot I thought that was more technical it's not that bad oh hit my knee off the triple clamps my right knee, that kind of hurt. Should have had my knee braces on. Hey guys, if you didn't already know, Patreon is the best way to support Dirt Bike Channel. We've got some really cool rewards over there, so click on the link up here that you see to become a patron. That'll take you directly to our site, and you can check everything out. Uh, you can donate as little as $1 per month, and it would really, really help us out. Thanks a ton, guys.